Prayer. This is an answer to prayer. Every time I talk about prayer, you might have heard me tell the story before, but let me tell it again. Every time I talk about prayer, I think about my first pastoral assignment. I was ordained into the ministry when I was 21 years old, and I worked at Dad's church. He started me at the, at the bottom, not that there's a bottom, but I was part-time, and, and once I was ordained, he gave me a little bit of responsibility. So the first real pastoral assignment was to give the prayer at their main service, like the morning prayer. And here's what was kind of scary about it. I had to lead the entire congregation in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. So I was coached on how to pray and how to use the right words and to say the these and the thous. And, and it, I had to be like on my A game. And then I was coached just to write out the prayer because this, this other pastor told me, no one is going to be looking at you anyway, Ed. So just go ahead and write the prayer out. Put it in your Bible and, and everything is cool. But remember, don't mess up, this pastor told me. And especially don't mess up on the Lord's Prayer because you'll have all these people repeating the Lord's Prayer after you, so just, 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 just go with it. Know it well. I said, I'm going to do it. So I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced, and I felt good about it. I had the prayer written out. I had the Lord's Prayer laminated in my Bible. I'm sitting in one of the throne chairs at the 11 o'clock service. We had the big throne chairs. Have you seen those things before in more traditional sanctuaries, giant pipe organ. And I was told once the choir ends their special production, the organ music will play very softly. And then I was told to look to the minister of music because he will give me that nod, that holy nod, which means it's your time to pray. Have you ever seen those holy nods before? We do them at weddings and funerals. You know, just. <laughs> it means you're up. I was so nervous. It was like an out-of-body experience. So I looked, got the holy nod. I walked to that giant pulpit and put my hands on either side of it. I was white-knuckling this pulpit, and I began to pray. Dear God, so I began this prayer, and I'm thinking to myself, this is going well. I'm just reading it. I'm feeling good about what I'm saying. It's theologically correct. I feel like people are with me. So I finished my part of the prayer. Then I was segueing into the Lord's Prayer. I'm saying to myself, I'm spurring the horse to the barn now. It's done. Drop the mic. All I've got to do is just the Lord's Prayer. Everybody knows that. I can easily say that. So my transition was, let's pray together as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, our Father who art in heaven. Oh, who art in heaven. Thousands of people repeating that. It kind of just like blew me back on my heels. I'm like, whoa. Hallowed be thy name, I read. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. At that moment, I don't know what happened. In fact, I've never had this happen before in my life. I totally froze. I choked. I blanked out. I couldn't read. I couldn't speak. I just like... And then the church tried to continue the Lord's Prayer. They didn't know most of the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Laughter broke out. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> He'll never make it. <laughs> and then I just kind of started crying. I said, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> and I closed my Bible, and I walked down those carpeted steps. It seemed like the steps were like two or three hundred steps. They were only about three. <laughs> and I saw an opening on the front row, on that front pew. I sat down, and of all people I sat by, I happened to sit by my mother. My mother never sat on the front row. 
And people were laughing. I mean, it was sad. It was pathetic. And my mother leaned over to me in the midst of laughter. She said, Ed, your voice sounded really good. <laughs> Only a mom. Only a mom. The Lord's Prayer. We think we know a lot about the Lord's Prayer, but do we really? The church is to be a house of prayer. Here's the church. Remember this? There's the steeple. Open the doors and see all of the prayerful people. The church is to be a house of prayer. A couple of guys were arguing about the Bible. You know, they were good friends. They were like, oh, man, I know more about the Bible than you do. And the other guy goes, no, 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 I know more about the Bible than you do. And his friend goes, man, I got $20 in my pocket. I got $20. You can't recite to me right now the Lord's Prayer. His friend goes, you're on. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And his friend was like, dude, you said it. Here's the $20. I think I know, we all think we know more about the Lord's prayer than we really do. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, is talking to us about spiritual symmetry. He's talking about different things, some disciplines. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to you briefly about today, because I know we have people standing around and everything, but I wanted to talk to you today briefly about a spiritual discipline. I want to talk to you about prayer. That's right, prayer. What is prayer to you? Well, you might say it's talking to God. Okay, that's what it is. It's talking to God. Jesus answered a question the disciples lobbed at him. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. They didn't say teach us to heal, teach us to preach, teach us to lead, teach us to use word pictures. Jesus, they said, Teach us to pray because there was something about the way he prayed that rocked them, that, that just snapped their heads. He prayed differently, and the disciples were like, we want to know how to pray. Jesus gives us a grid, an outline, so to speak, of how to talk to God. When do you talk to God? I read recently that 43% of Americans pray at least once a day. And then one out of four said that God answers their prayers regularly and profoundly. I thought that was interesting. And this study went on to say that even people who aren't church-going people pray. We are people that believe in prayer. But I want to ask you, why do you pray? What, what is your content in your prayers? Last Sunday night, Lisa and I had a party, a neighborhood party. And it was really fun because we met a kaleidoscopic range of people around our neighborhood. And, you know, you talk to people. The, the conversation kind of has a flow, doesn't it? You just kind of got to know someone. You introduce yourself. Maybe they talk about what they like. And you might ask them the quintessential, what do you do professionally? What do you do for a living? And you go back and forth. And the longer you talk, the more intimate it becomes. There's a, there's a, there's a flow to it. Well, well, Jesus, in these 68 words, it only takes, what, 25 seconds to recite the Lord's Prayer. Jesus gives us an outline of how to pray. I believe we really begin to pray when we can throw out our cliches, our kind of memorized, you know, Christianese that, that we have. In other words, we shouldn't pray like I prayed when I botched the Lord's Prayer. I hate to confess this, but I think I was thinking too much about what people thought of me as opposed to talking to the Lord in prayer. And this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, don't be like the hypocrites. Oh, they blow the trumpets. They, here I am praying. They say, oh, here I am fasting. Jesus said, don't be like that. Pray this way. Our Father. That's what he said. Our Father. When 
His hearers heard that. Our Father totally blew them away. It blew away the Jewish stereotypes because when you call God your Father, that is an intimate term. In, in the original language, it, it means dad. I'm a dad. Any, any dads here? Lift your hand if you're a dad. Man, let's give it up for the dads. Being a dad is great, isn't it? It really is. Being a dad is great. Jesus is acknowledging that God is his father, and he's saying to you and me, we need to acknowledge that. God, you're my father, dad. I love for my kids to call me dad. When I see their names come up on the phone, I'm going to take the call. Even to this day, and we have adult children, and now grandchildren, when I hear dad or granddad, they call me Big E and Lisa Muzzy. But when we hear that, it's like, whoa, man, I like that. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing like it. I mean, think dad's back. Or maybe you're in this stage, fathers right now, when, you're, when your little ones lift, your, lift their hands and go, dad, dad, dad. There's nothing like that. Dad, our father. I like our father. It's, it's a, a plural pronoun, our father. I get messed up when I think, you know what, it's, it's just about me. It's, 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 it's just about my needs and what makes me feel good and what makes me look good. Our father. Jesus is talking about the fact that we have other siblings. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not just me. So often Jesus is not going to answer your prayers or mine until we're rightly related to the other brothers and sisters. And people say, oh, my God, well, well my deal, I mean, I, I feel you, but it's about our. The Bible says over and over, one another, one another, one another, one another, one another. That's why we have the church. Once we become followers of Christ, we're adopted into the family of God. We're, you've heard the term before, born again. We're adopted. God is our Father, our Father. We're in the household of faith. We're in the house. That's why the church is so vital. It's the only thing that Jesus ever constructed, the church. So this is something that believers should say, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven. That's where, that's where the Lord resides, in heaven. In heaven, there, way out there, you might think. So when I pray, I have an opportunity to take what is out there and to bring it what is right here in my life. I, I can take something out there, heaven, and bring heaven to earth. Prayer is the conduit. Prayer is the process which that happens. So when I pray... I can enter, check this out, anytime, day or night, I can enter the presence of God. I move from the physical to the spiritual. Our Father, acknowledge him. And I have access to the Father because of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And this is just like awesome. Jesus is, is praying for you and for me right now. <laughs> Applause sign. I often, I don't know what to say when I pray. And you don't either. You don't know what to say when you pray. Jesus himself is praying for us. Even if you don't know Christ personally, and I know many of you here, maybe you're just kind of testing the waters, kicking tires. Jesus is praying for you right now. So we acknowledge that God is our Father, our Heavenly Father, Dad, this intimate relationship we have with him. We're rightly related to the brothers and sisters, the church. We're involved in a church. We have access because of Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. You don't have to go through a priest or a pastor to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Lord, I want what's happening up there to happen down here. It's stunning how many people profane the name of God. 
God's name is to be reverenced. God's name is holy. Again, we're intimate with him. We, we call him, and we can call him dad. And my kids call me dad, but I don't want my kids to say, thou wonderfulest creator. The one back in the day who escorteth me to soccer at practice. I mean, I would go like, what? Just call me dad. And that's what God wants with you and me. That's why the Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. We're to pray constantly. When we're tempted, pray. When we think impure thoughts, pray. When we think good thoughts, pray. Just talk to God. We acknowledge him, and then we have access to him because of Jesus Christ, because of what Jesus did on the cross for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins and rose again. Yet, so many times we profane the name of God. And a lot of times when people profane the name of God, they don't know what in the heck they're saying. How many times have you seen, I don't know, some, some artist or, or, or some actor, actress, they'll just take God's name in vain over and over and over again, and then they'll say, God bless you, peace. Or they'll say, let's huddle up and pray now. I'm like, What? What? So the moment we're adopted into the family of God, we're a child of God, and in reality, my last name is not Ed Young. I mean, it is, but it's Ed Young Christian. So if you're a believer, your last name is Christian. We're in the family of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, your name is your nature, and your nature is your name. The glory of God. God's nickname is glory. And glory is who God is. It's the sum total of all of his attributes. We acknowledge him. We have access to him. Prayer is more about alignment than it is just about asking. I'm I'm aligning myself with God. God, not my agenda, yours. God, and that's tough for me. Not my will, but yours. There are two aspects of God's will because Jesus said that that we need to pray according to the will of God. The will of God. There are two aspects of the will of God. The first one would be called a conditional aspect of the will of God. Say that word conditional with me. Conditional. God's will, in many cases, in many situations, is based upon your obedience and mine It's based upon your prayers and mine. In other words, God's not going to act until we talk to him. Does that make sense to everybody? Nod your head. Let me give you an example. Jesus said, you know, it's God's will that everyone, that every single person gets saved. Isn't that great? It's God's will that every single person bows the knee and becomes a follower of Jesus. However... That's God's conditional will. It's based on your response and mine. So there's a mystery to it. And some people throw their hands in the air and go, well, why even pray? I mean, if God knows everything already, why even pray? Prayer is alignment, and prayer is allowing us to understand and be the application of the answer to God's conditional and also his unconditional will. How about God's unconditional will? Say that, unconditional will. That just means God's gonna do stuff no matter what you do and no matter what I do. It's the unconditional will of God. Yet God wants so much for you and me to have this deep fellowship and relationship with him, he wants us to talk about All situations with him. Prayer is that process. It's the conduit between heaven and earth. A lot of us just got back from Israel. If you've not been to Israel, we're going to go again a year from March. I took a passport with me. Anybody have a passport? Yeah. All right. When I I had that passport, I'm standing in line, and you you walk up, and you give the passport to an official to, to allow you entrance into, for example, Israel. And in Israel, man, they don't play. They don't, they, don't, they don't mess around with security. 
So, you know, give the passport to this gentleman or this lady, and they will ask you, you know, why are you going to Israel, and scan it and everything, and make sure it looks like you, and, you know, mine, my passport picture, I'm like bald, and, and, and I said, well, you know, I had hair transplants, I had to shave my head before they did the hair transplants, and so they kind of laugh, most of them do. They let me, though, I, I seriously had hair transplants. And we're going to do a series one day called Hair in the Bible. Hair is mentioned a lot. That's a whole other subject. So they allowed me to enter another realm because of my passport. Prayer is your passport. How do you enter another realm through prayer? Prayer. So you acknowledge who God is. You have access. You have alignment. Then Jesus said, ask, go for the ask. Give us this day our daily bread. How specific is that? God is magnificent, but also microscopic. I remember years ago, a friend of mine said, and I have a hard time praying about these specific things because, man, God has more to worry about than my, than my deal. Are you kidding me? The Bible says God knows the number of hairs on our head, even if that number is diminishing or by the miracle of hair transplant surgeons, it's increasing. I don't know. God knows, and God is concerned. Think about this. The God of the universe is concerned about those little things. Those things you think, oh, they're insignificant. Oh, that thought, no big deal. That relationship, does God really care about that? I'm telling you, God does. When we begin to ask God for things, we realize he's the source of it all. Ask, ask, ask. We've been talking about how to upgrade our decade. 3,650 days, roughly, and then we'll get to the year 2030. And part of this spiritual symmetry is this beautiful conversation with God called prayer. Then Jesus hit the, the heart of it. He talked about forgiveness. Woo, man, is that a difficult subject or what? Now, this is a prayer for all of you Bible scholars that Jesus could not pray. And forgive us our trespasses. He's sinless. As we forgive those who trespass against us. See, he can't pray that prayer. He only called God God one time in the Bible when he was dying on the cross for your sins and mine. Isn't that interesting? So, Forgiveness is something that I struggle with. How many people in here struggle with forgiveness too? I mean, I do. I do. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to release this person. I'm not going to forgive this person, this, this coach who messed me around until he comes crawling back to me and goes, Ed, I was totally wrong. Will you forgive me? Then, then, then I'll grant him forgiveness. Or my parent. My parent was so wrong. They were so abusive. They were so this or so that. I'm not going to forgive them until they come crawling back to me and say, you know what? I was wrong. I blew it. I messed up. Or my friend who ripped me off in this business deal. Or that teammate who lied about me and put something on social media. When they come back to me, then I'll give them forgiveness. Well, here, again, here, is, here would be the guts of the gospel, forgiveness. All I've got to do is look at the cross and realize I'm greatly forgiven. And forgiveness is more for the one who's been hurt than the perpetrator. Because that perpetrator will probably never come back to you. That ex-spouse will never come back to you and say, you know what? I cheated on you. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? That's probably not going to happen. So the enemy, if I'm the devil, I want you to turn that over and over on the rotisserie grill of your mind and I want to keep you from being the kind of person that God desires. I want you to get so enraged, so upset, so fixated on that person who messed you around that you don't walk in the kind of freedom that God desires. Unleashing unforgiveness is unbelievable. I love trucks. You know, we have half-ton, three-quarter ton trucks, you know, around. This is Texas. Truck country. Sorry, Florida. 
Oklahoma, I know, is a truck country. And there are more and more trucks in Florida. A truck, though, has this, has this amount, this number on it, and, and the manufacturers know how much weight this truck can handle. The Bible tells you and me, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, let's read this together. One, two, three. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, I mean, we're going to tempt, be, be tempted. He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I call this the the truck verse. God knows you and me so well. He knows how much you can take, how much my frame can take. He's always going to provide a way out. God doesn't lead us into it. He leads us around it, and we can be delivered from evil. So check this out. When you pray, acknowledge God, who God is. We have access to God because of Jesus Christ. We're aligned. Not my wants, God, but I want what you want because I know what you want for me is the best. Then we have this awareness of the, of the power of God. And then within that too, we have the opportunity to ask. All right, what's your homework? Here's your homework. Give me about 90 seconds. There's a hand on the screen. I traced my hand. Have you ever done that before? Is that fun to do? That's your homework. Go home. You're like, what? This is like in the first grade. Trust me, go home and trace your hand. First of all, I want you to acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge as we've been talking about, God, you're my father. This is a pattern of prayer. Next, access. We have access through Jesus. Acknowledge God. Adore him. Call him dad. Realize the access and the price that's been paid. Then we have the alignment. The alignment. What are you struggling with? Oh, this is mine. This is my will, my agenda. But no, no, God, I want to surrender it to you. That's alignment. How about asking? I mean, Jesus is saying, ask for your daily bread. Thank God for it. What do you need to ask him for? And then we're aware, aware of God leading us around temptation. We're aware of it. Once you do that, here's what's going to happen. You'll have a grasp on prayer. You'll understand that template. You'll understand that guide. And we also have it on our app. If you don't have our app, go to the app store. It's free, free 99, Fellowship Church, and it's on the app. Also, on top of this homework, establish a place where you pray every day. Here's where I pray. I took a picture of where I pray. This is sort of like my chair that, that I, I try to pray every single day right there. So, so have some chair time. At least 10 to 15 minutes a day, begin opening God's word, begin to pray. We have it on our map, on our app, and we have you a map on how to pray. So what am I saying to you? I'm simply saying this. Pray. How do you pray? You start praying. I mean, if LeBron James walked up here and talked about how to shoot a jump shot, would you listen? I would. If Tom Brady said, here's how to pass, I would listen. If Jeff Bezos said, here, here's, here's, how to, here's how to start a company, here's how to be an entrepreneur, I think we'd all listen. What if Beyonce said, okay, here's how to sing. Woo, Beyonce! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We would listen. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. We need to listen and obey and do the stuff. What do you say? What do you say when you get that nod? How do you pray? When you get that nod, 
Let's pray together. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, thank you so much for this message. Thank you for this amazing church. I thank you that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And I thank you that we can be a part of this household of faith. And Lord, I pray if there's someone here and you've never, ever, ever become a follower of Christ, a Christian, that you would pray this prayer with me. Now, this is a prayer that I prayed years ago when I became a Christian. This, though, can be your prayer, and I'm going to lead you and guide you on what to say. Because I've got news for you. God loves you right where you are. I don't care what you've been involved in or what you did last night or, or, or whatever. God loves you. And he wants to have a relationship with you. And you can establish that relationship today by saying yes to God's will. Because it's God's will that everyone, everyone, becomes a follower of his. But the condition is on your life and mine. Well, here's how to do it. Just, just pray this prayer. This is a prayer that I prayed. I'll lead you in it. Just say to yourself, dear God, I admit to you that I've sinned, that I've committed trespasses, and I know my trespasses have separated me from you, and it's because of sin. I believe, God, that you are holy, that you're perfect, and that you love me so much, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. You took all of my trespasses upon your shoulders you spilled your blood. You died. And I believe, God, that Jesus rose again. And right now, I ask you, Jesus Christ, to invade my life. I open the door of my life and ask you to come in. Jesus, power wash my soul. And the moment you said that prayer, the moment you believed Christ came into your life, and you, my friend, have a relationship with the God of the universe. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you prayed that prayer with me for the first time and meant it, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, would you lift your hand? Just keep your hand up on the front and the back. You might be standing against the wall, some against the wall. We have some ushers, some hosts, who will give you a Bible and some information about this new life with Jesus Christ. Many, many hands are going up. Just lift your hand, and an usher will pass you a Bible, and we'll give you some information about what now. It's crucial that you don't become a spiritual orphan, that you connect with the household of faith, which is the church. Others here, maybe you need a prayer in a relationship. Maybe a family situation, maybe a friendship. You need special prayer. Would you lift your hand if you need a prayer in a relationship? Awesome. Father, we pray for these relationships. We have no idea all this, the scenarios and the situations, but we give these relationships to you. Maybe others here are going through a sickness or you know someone who needs the healing touch of the great physician. If you need prayer for healing and restoration, physically, spiritually, would you lift your hand? So many. Father, we give all of these to you. We know you are the true doctor. And I pray that you would work through the power of your Holy Spirit through doctors, through nurses, and we just give all of these situations to you. Maybe you need prayer in the area of finances or in business. Lift your hand. We want to pray for you. Father, thank you that you've called most all of us, well, in fact, all of us into the ministry, and some of us are in the marketplace and we're ministers there. Give us the strength and the ability to be the kind of men and women you desire. Also, Father, it's my prayer that in financial situations that you would help us 
God, to, to wake up and understand the brilliance that everything is yours and the power of a budget and planning. We ask all these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.